Good morning, dear students. My name is Farhan Mazal, and today is 28th of September 2021. Right now, I am with the 11th Cambridge class. The subject we are studying is Physics 5054, and today we have set our hearts to solve an ATP paper uh, alternative to practical. Uh, this paper, the time allowed is one hour, and Let's start this paper. This is May, June, 2021, 4-2 paper. This ATP paper is from the zone two, or we call it the variant two. So let's start today's paper. So the first question coming up on your screen, a student, okay. So a student investigates, how the potential difference uh, V across a fixed resistor R changes as extra resistance is added to the circuit. Uh, a part, she sets up the circuit as shown in the figure 1.1. So here you can see we have a cell or we have a battery. Here we have a switch and here we have connected. And this is a meter rule. On the meter rule, we have fixed a wire of certain length. And uh, here we have a crocodile clip and wherever I will, and this crocodile clip here is connected with this fixed resistor and back to the battery. And around this fixed resistor, we have put a voltmeter. So it can tell you the potential difference across this voltmeter. And this crocodile clip can be put here, it can be put here, it can be put here, it, it can be put here. So if you move this crocodile clip towards the right side, the length of this wire, which will be used in the circuit will increase. So uh, this is how this, uh, this experiment works. So uh, let's move to the next part. She connects the crocodile. Let me reduce the size so you can see the whole thing together. Okay, so uh, what she did, uh, she connects the crocodile clip C to a point on the resistance wire at a length of 20 centimeter from the end X. So this length here, this length which uh, of this wire is being used in the circuit is 20 centimeter. She closes the switch, she will close this switch and she reads the voltmeter and records the reading. So she check what's the reading on this voltmeter. She, this is telling you the voltage drop across the resistor R. Uh, she opens the switch and figure 1.2 shows the voltmeter reading. So here we have the what, what was the reading on the voltmeter. This is showing up. So let me increase the size so you can see. So this is the reading on the voltmeter. So this voltmeter here, you know, we have zero. Here we have one. Here we have two. So there are how many gaps? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So there are 10 gaps between one and two. So this is 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3, 1 1.4. So this reading is right now 1.4 volt. So the voltmeter is showing a reading of 1.4 volt. Hopefully you have understood. He says that read the voltmeter scale in the table 1.1 on the page number four, which is the next page record the potential difference V. So we noted down that the reading is 1.4 volt. And then he says, calculate the one by V and record it in its value in the table 1.1 on the page number four to the appropriate number of significant figure. So uh, the, this reading is 1.4. So I will reciprocate its value one divided by 1.4, whatever the answer will come on the calculator, I will note it down. So this is, uh, okay, let's move to the next question. So this is on the page number four, the table they were talking about. And here we have to write 1.4 volt. And here we have to write the reciprocal of the 1.4. So uh, let me show you, this is uh, how we have done on a page. And okay, so this is that reading coming up on your, on, on your screen. And you can see that the reading on the voltmeter in the table 1.1, I am filling it, is 1.4. And when I reciprocate it on your calculator, you will write one divide 1.4, and that will be 0 0.71.
so this is how you do it and and uh, let's go back to the paper okay so we have filled this table the b part of the question number one is she repeats the procedure in the A using the values of the L equals to 30 centimeter, 40 centimeter, 60 centimeter, and 80 centimeter. Her results are shown in the table 1.1. So these lengths, the results are shown here. You can see for 30 centimeter, the table is filled, 40, 60, 80 centimeter. All the values are already filled in. So just why the student opens the switch between the readings, why we will open the switch. Once you have taken a, a, read, a reading of the voltmeter for a certain length of the resistance wire, then you open the switch. The reason is because when the current is flowing through the wire, and the wire becomes hot because the, when the current flows through the wire, when the current overcomes the, um, the resistance of the wire, so the heat, a thermal energy is produced, which increases the temperature of the wire, which changes the resistance of the wire. So that's why we switch it off so that the, the wire becomes uh, normal at normal temperature if it has got heated. So that's why we switch off the reading before taking the next reading for the next length. So let me show you my answer. And so, so we will, okay. So the next, the reason is resistors, resistor become hot if switch, if the switch is kept close. Resistor becomes hot if the switch is kept close. Okay, okay. So uh, that was the B part. And let's move to the next part. And the next question, I mean, Okay, so that was the B part. He says, on the grid provided in the figure 1.3, on the page number five, plot a graph of one by V on the Y axis against L on the X axis. Start both axes from the origin 0 comma 0, draw the best fit straight line. So what we will do here, um, I have to draw a graph and one by V on the Y axis and L on the X axis. So I can show you, uh, let me show you this. Uh, this is the grid, which is on the page number five. So let me increase the size so you can clear it. Okay, so this is that grid on the page number five. Uh, on, the, on this X axis, we have to take the length and the length is um, from uh, 20, it, the length is going up to, I think the maximum length available is up to 80 centimeter. And these values of the V, there we have 0 0.71, 0 0.77, 0 0.91, 1.1, 1.3. So I will choose a suitable grid and then I will plot it. So let me show you my graph, I have drawn this. And you can see that uh, this graph is showing up on your screen. And let me, let me, let, let me increase the size of this. Okay, now let me show you. Okay. Now you can see this grid is showing up on the, on the, on the X axis. We have taken the length and that length is in centimeters. It's very important to, to label the, uh, the x-axis. Here we are representing the length it's in centimeters. On the y-axis, the one by V is represented. The value goes up to um, uh, 1.3. So here, uh, one centimeter represents five. So two centimeter represents 10. Here you can see 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 centimeter. Here, the one by V is represented here. So one centimeter on the y-axis is represented with the 0 0.1, uh, one by V. So here you can see 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, one, 1.2, 1.4. And here I have that table. So this value is for the x-axis, 
and this value is for the y axis at 20 comma 0 0.71 30 comma 0 0.77 40 comma 0 0.91 60 comma 1.1 80 comma 1.3 so i will plot these points and you can see that i have plotted these black dots you can see i have plotted them on the on the graph and then after that we have to draw a line of best fit so here you can see that I have drawn a line of best fit. I have tried to draw the best, the line of best fit. And you can see here, I have two points below the line. Then there are two points above the line. So this is the line of best fit. So then in the next question, I think they have asked you. So let me show you the next question. The next question coming up on your screen is, so you can see that the, the next, we are done with the C part. Uh, we have drawn the best, uh, the line of the best fit. And then the B part is calculate the gradient M of your line, show all working and indicate on the graph, the values you use. Okay, so let me show you that how we have done this. So I have taken this point, its coordinates are 20 comma 0 0.65. I have taken this point, its coordinates are 70 comma 1.50. And then I have made this triangle. This shows the rise and this shows the run. So here we go. So I have taken these two points. I wanted to find out the gradient of this line and I can find the gradient of this line very easily. Uh, y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1, and that will be 1.50 minus 0 0.65 divided by 70 minus 20, that will be 0 0.85 divided by 50, and that will be equal to 0 0.017. So the gradient of this line is 0 0.07. So I hope you can understand this. And uh, then the next question is extend your line until it crosses the y-axis measure the intercept c that your line makes with the y-axis so here we have to in, uh, prolong this line until this line cuts the y-axis and wherever it cuts the y-axis you have to you have to uh, check what's the uh, y intercept here so it's something like 0 0.41 and let me 0.41, I think. 0.41 will be the y-intercept. The E part is calculate the electromotive force EMF E of the cell using the equation. Here, this equation is given. Equation is uh, E is equals to K by C. K by C. Where C means uh, the y-intercept here, which is approximately 0.41. And the K means the gradient. And... I think the gradient. So what's the meaning of the K? So K, where the K is one, no, sorry, the K is given here. Where K is 1.0 volt, it is given in the question. We just put these values 1.0 divided by the K value is given here in the question. So C value is this Y intercept 0 0.41. You just divide that and you got 0 0.024. So this is question number one, D and E part. Okay. Now we move to the question number one and F part suggests one practical reasons why despite carrying out the experiment with care, the student's value for E may not be the true value. You know, the cells have some internal, uh, internal resistance in them. And due to that internal resistance, what happens, whatever the uh, voltage or EMF the manufacturer claims, uh, some of the, some of the, electric energy is wasted in overcoming the internal resistance. So the EMF, actual EMF, which you get out of the cell is less than what it, what it claims. So cells have internal resistance. That is the reason your the EMF, which you actually calculated will be less than the real uh, value, the value which is claimed. The results in table 1.1 shows that as the length L of the resistance wire increases, the potential difference V decreases. State how the result shows that L is not inversely proportional to V. You know, uh, if two quantities are inversely proportional to each other, then the product of uh, those two quantities uh, will remain uh, constant. 
for example, the L1 multiply the V1, that whatever its answer is L2 multiply V2, the answer should be the same. The product of the, if the product of the two quantities, if you change the L and the V will automatically change. So the product of the L1 V1, if it is equals to the product of the L2 V2, then we can say that they are, uh, they are inversely proportional to each other. So let's check the value of the L is 20, the V1 is, L1 is 20, the V1 is 0 0.71. So when you multiply them, the answer is not same. So um, you see, uh, we can say that, uh, here I have taken the inverse value. Uh, let me go back and check if, um, see. If you multiply, 20, let me take out the calculator so I can show you because there I have taken the value of the one by V. So we should have not taken the value of the one by V. We should have taken the value of the V. So let's use the calculator. So let's use the calculator. So, you know, uh, L1 is 20. You multiply it with uh, 1.4. You multiply it with 1.4, you get 28. So remember this uh, number, L1 multiply L2, L1 multiply V2, V1 is 28. And let's multiply 80 with 0.8. 80 multiply 0 0.8, you get 64. You see the product of L1, V1 and L2, V2 uh, are not same. So if the products are not same, it means these, pro, uh, these two quantities, they are not inversely proportional to each other. So when I wrote my an answer, you see, when I wrote my answer, I used uh, the value I used here, instead of using the value of the V, I used the value of the one by V. So uh, you can use the value of the one by V, but actually you should have used the value of the V. Uh, so I have shown you on the calculator that you should have used the value of the V because the product of the L1, V1 and L2, V2 is not the same because the product of the L and the V is not constant. So they are not inversely proportional to each other. So that's the question number one and it's G part. Hopefully you have understood and I have told you what mistake I have made here. I have not used the value of the V. I have put here the value of the one by V. You were supposed to put the value of the V. I showed you on the calculator that how this is done. So hopefully you have understood. So let's go back to the question. So that was the question. Uh, let me reduce the size so you can see the whole question. So we are done with the question number one. So this is the whole question number one coming up on your screen. We are done with this question and we have drawn the grid and this is how this question number one is done. It's a 14 mark question, very important. So we are moving to the next question. Here he says that uh, a student measures the acceleration of a trolley rolling down a ramp. He makes a ramp by using a wooden plank, resting one end of the plank on a bench and using a stand and clamp to support the other end. He draws a line AB across the ramp. You can see this line AB on the ramp, across the ramp uh, near to the top. Uh, he draws another line CD parallel to AB at a distance of 120 centimeter further down the ramp. So from here, further down the ramp, 120 centimeter away, you draw another line parallel to the AB. The name of the line is CD. He adjusts the height of the top of the ramp above the bench by moving the clamp until the ramp makes an angle of 30 degree with the bench. So this ramp is making a 30 degree angle and you can see this uh, 30 degree angle here. So he places a trolley on the ramp so that the front wheels of the trolley touch the AB. The front wheel of the trolley is AB. So when the front wheel, when you will let it go, the, when the front wheels of the trolley uh, will be on the CD, so the, it, it will mean that the trolley has covered a distance of 120 centimeter. Figure 2.1. the ramp set up by the student and uh, he says suggest uh, a measuring device that the student uses 
to ensure that the AB and the CD are 120 centimeter apart. So if you want to know that this distance is 120 centimeter apart, you can use a measuring tape. So with the help of the measuring tape, we can uh, find out this length of 120 centimeter. A ram makes an angle of 30 degree with the bench. So here, if you want to measure this angle, you can use a set square. So you can use a set square. Set square is that triangles which are in your geometry box. So very simple question, question number two, A part. And let me show you, I have done this on a paper also. Let me show that. Okay, so this is how you do uh, question number two, A part, a measuring tape and a protractor. Uh, sorry, with the help of the protractor, I said set square. You know, the set square has uh, uh, one of the set squares, which has one angle of 60 and the, the big set square. You know, the set squares in your geometry box, there are two set squares. One is a little smaller set square and the one is a little bigger set square, comparatively bigger set square. Uh, the bigger set square has three angles in it. One angle is 90, one angle is 60, and one angle is 30. So you can use that set square. You can also use protector, a large protector. Uh, normally in our language in Pakistan, we call it D to measure the angles. That is called protractor. So you can use a protractor and uh, with the help of protractor, you can find out the, you can check that that angle is 30 and you can also use set square. Set square has uh, one of the set squares, the large set square. It's one angle is of, of 30. So you can use that also. And so the next question, uh, that was the A part. B part, the student releases the trolley and at the same time starts a stopwatch. Stops the stopwatch when the trolley has traveled 20 centimeter down the ramp. He places the trolley at the top of the ramp with its front wheels touching A, B and repeats the procedure twice. The time T for the trolley to travel a distance of 120 centimeter are shown below 0 0.70 centimeter, 0 0.81 centimeter, 0 0.95, I said centimeter, it's second. 0 0.70 seconds, 0 0.81 second, 0 0.95 second. So just one reason why there is a large variation in these times. Uh, so every time, the three times student has measured the time, all the three times, the values have a lot of variation from each other. So the reason might be that the student not level with the finish line. So it's difficult to judge when the front wheels pass the CD. That is called the parallax error. So you see, if you are not leveled with the, with the mark CD, so it will be quite difficult for you to accurately judge that when the front wheels have crossed the CD. So that was well, the question number two is B part uh, the, on the question number two is on the figure 2.2 is a side view of the arrangement with the trolley at the start position on the figure 2.2 draw the position of the trolley when it has traveled 120 centimeter. So we started our experiment. Uh, we started the stopwatch when the front wheels of the trolley were on the AB. So when the front wheel of the trolley will be on the CD, it will mean that the trolley has covered a distance of 120 centimeter. So you can see here, I have drawn the trolley. Its front wheel is on the CD. So that is what they are asking for. Okay, so question number uh, two and B third part, he says calculate the average time for the trolley to travel a distance of uh, 120 centimeter. So the three times which they have given, you just add them up and whatever the sum you get, you divide it with the three. And so the, the, the average time will be 0 0.82 seconds. The next question, he says, e, a C part, he says, calculate the acceleration of the trolley uh, down the ramp using the equation. Very simple thing. He has given you an equation. He says, A is equals to 2D divided by T square. 2D divided by T square. So D means the distance which you have traveled. That is 120 centimeter. And the T is 0 0.82 seconds. Just put these values. So 2 multiplied by 120 divided by 0 0.82 whole square equals to 356.9, which is approximately 360. Uh, so the unit will be centimeter per second square. Because the length has been taken in the centimeters, that's why uh, 
the unit of the acceleration will be centimeter per second square. The DE party suggests how the student could modify this his experiment so that a more accurate value for the acceleration A of the trolley is obtained. Um, you see one way of doing this is because the time uh, in which the trolley covered a distance of 120 centimeter, the time is very short. So here the, the, the reaction time of the students will be a very large part of this reading. So uh, it will be better idea if we increase this length so, so that the actual time of traveling becomes larger and then the reaction time of the, the student uh, will be a smaller portion of that time. So comparative to the, the value that the, the trolley took to travel, so the reaction time will be a smaller portion of that time. So the value of the D should be larger than 120 centimeters, this is one solution. So we are done with the question number uh, two. Let me go back to the, okay. So here was that question and we were talking about, so that was the question, uh, question number two. I hopefully we have read this whole thing. And then this was the question. That was the third part and the second part and the third part. And this was the C part of that question number two. So we are done with this question number two. Let's move to the next question. Okay. So on your screen, it is coming up that question number two. We are coming to the question number three, sorry. A student measures the focal length of, of a convex lens. She sets up the apparatus as shown in the figure 3.1. So here you can see we have a convex lens here. Here we have a lamp, here we have a object, here we have a hole in the object, and here we have a screen. The image of this hole will be formed here. So the illuminated object is in the shape of an equilateral triangle and uh, shown in the figure 3.1. Point two, the object is drawn full scale. So this is that object. And uh, this ob there we have a cut in the shape of a triangle. So the object is basically a triangle and the height of the triangle is height of the object H O. She switches on the lamp and places the lens at distance U. The distance between the, this object and this lens is U and which is 20 centimeters from the illuminated objects. She adjusts the position of the screen by moving it slowly backward, by moving it slowly backward. So here you can see the whole question. Okay. Uh, she switches on the lamp and places the lens a distance U of 20 centimeters from the illuminated object. She adjusts the position of the screen by moving it slowly backwards and forwards until a sharp image of the illuminated object is formed on the screen. The image of the illuminated object formed on the screen is shown full size in the figure 3.3. So this is the image which is formed on the screen and this is full size. So this is the height of the image. You can see the image is real, the image is inverted, the image is magnified, the image is larger in the size as compared to the object. The first question which is coming up on your screen. So the first question coming up on your screen is state two differences between the object and the image. You can see the image and uh, the image is in inverted as compared to the object. The image has been inverted. And the second difference is the image is magnified. The image is larger in size as compared to the object. So these are the two differences between the object and the image. Then he says, Meyer, this word is very important, Meyer. He says, Meyer, Meyer, the length uh, and uh, height. Meyer means you used actually a scale to Meyer. And then he says, Meyer, the height, HI of the image. So that is also very important. Uh, so use a scale by the help of the scale, Meyer, this height of the image and measure the height of the object, and you will enter those values here. Then he says, calculate the magnification M of the image using this equation. So whatever will be your HI value, divide it with the HO value, you will get the magnification. And then he says, calculate the focal length F of the lens using this equation. So this equation, 
enter the value of the M, and which you will have in this uh, here. And the value of the U is 20. Just put the values in this formula and you will be able to find out the answer. So this is question number three. Let me show you, I've done this on a paper. Here we go. So state two differences between the object and the image. The image is inverted, the image is magnified. When I use the scale to measure the HO, that is 0 0.9 centimeter. When I use scale to measure the height of the image, it was 2.6, uh, 2.6, it was 2.6 centimeter. So then we, he says to calculate the magnification. M, the magnification is HI divided by HO, that is 2.6 divided by 0 0.9, which is 2.888. That is approximately 2.9. So magnification is 2.9. Then he says calculate the focal length by using the formula. The formula is given. You just have to enter the values. The M value is 2.9. The U value is 20 centimeter. So just put those values there, do the calculation. The final answer will be 14.9 centimeter so we are done my dear students we are done with the question number three hopefully this is clear to you so uh, let's go back to the question okay so the next question is question number four so here he says that uh, a student a student uses a plotting compass to plot the pattern of the magnetic field around a straight wire that is carrying so this wire has this is a straight wire and when the current will come in the downward direction you must have studied in your course that we can find the direction of the magnetic field around a straight conductor by using the right hand rule so the right hand rule says that if this is my the current is going down i will hold that current wire the conductor in my right hand in such a way that my thumb is in the direction of the conventional current then the curves of my right hand they show the direction of the magnetic field. So this is a straight conductor. When the current is going downward in this wire, the current, the magnetic field around it, it will be clockwise. So magnetic field around it will be clockwise. And he says, the student sets up the circuit as shown in the figure, horizontal rectangular card. So it's a card, a kind of paper, hard paper. And this wire is passing through this. And here we have a plotting compass. And he says the wire is arranged vertically. Let me reduce the size so you can see the whole thing. He says uh, the wire is arranged vertically, but it passes through the middle of the horizontal rectangular card. Describe how the student uses the plotting uh, compass to plot the pattern of the magnetic field when the switch in the circuit is closed. You may add to figure 4.1 to help you explain your answer, if you wish, what we will do near this wire, I will put this magnetic compass near this plot, uh, com, uh, this wire. So wherever the pointers will point, uh, uh, on the tail of the po uh, pointer, I will put a dot on the paper, and wherever the head of the pointer will be point pointing, I will put a dot on the paper. Then I will pick my compass, I will put it here and such a way, that the tail of the pointer will coincide with this second dot. And wherever the pointer's head will point, I'll put the third dot. Then I will pick it and put it in ahead of the third dot in such a way that the tail of the pointer is coinciding with this that third dot. And wherever the pointer head will point, I will put the first, fourth dot. So I will continue this process until I reach the, the new dot. Then I will join them with a, a smooth curve, and then I start the, uh, the, I will put the compass a little further from the wire on the cardboard, and I will repeat the whole process. So this is how you will, how, how you will find the, uh, the, the magnetic field pattern around the straight conductor on this, uh, on this horizontal rectangular card. I have written this answer. So before going to that, he says, state what else the student can deduce about the magnetic field in this investigation. Uh, with the help of the plotting compass, you can find out the direction of the uh, magnetic field around this wire. And that will be clockwise, I know, because of the right-hand rule. Okay, so let me show you that I have written this answer as well. Uh, okay, so on your screen, this question, the answer is going coming up. Um, this is my suggestion. You can write a better answer. 
and uh, but from here you can take a little bit guidance place the magnetic compass near wire mark the tail and head of the pointer on the card with dots move compass and mark a dot to show head of the pointer tail of the pointer should coincide with the previous dot continue this until you reach the dot from where you started then start from a different point a little further from the wire okay so hopefully you understand that how you have to write you can write a better answer as compared to the answer which i wrote but this is a simple idea that what you have to do so on that diagram on that diagram you see let me go to that diagram. Let me go to that diagram. Where is that diagram? So let me. He said that the help with us with this diagram. So let me take it. Snipping. <laughs> because he said you can use the. Let me take this diagram to the, okay, paint. I just want to show you that how this is done. Okay. So what we will do, Copy paste. So you will place it here. Okay. Uh -huh. You place it here. Okay. This is the diagram which we have to draw. Okay. Okay. So when you will place it, it will be like this. Something like this, okay? So this is how you place those magnetic compasses around this. This diagram you can draw. So I thought it will be a good idea if we use this, okay? So let me add this there. Just that, yeah. Okay, so... Uh, the last part was uh, state what else the student can deduce about the magnetic field in this investigation. Student can find the direction of the magnetic field here. So student can find the direction of the magnetic field here. So we easily, uh, you can find the direction. I told you the direction will be uh, uh, anti-clockwise. Uh, it will be clockwise actually. But when I plotted those magnetic compasses, I put them in a anti-clockwise manner so it does not matter the direction exact direction was not questioned here so my dear students uh, we are done with this paper today my dear students uh, we have done may june 2021 for two paper it's uh, atp paper alternative to practical we call it paper four the subject we are studying is physics 5054 so my name is Farhan Mazar, and today is uh, 28th of summer, September 2021. Hopefully, hopefully this video will help you. It will help you to improve your concepts of physics. And if it has, it has helped you in any manner, so you can uh, suggest these videos uh, to your friends and to your class fellows and also do me a favor share the link of this video in your facebook in your instagram on your twitter
whatever social media you are using, that will be a great appreciation for me and it will give me encouragement and I will continue doing this work. And your appreciation is very important for me. So thank you very much, everybody. Hopefully this is helpful to you. So thank you very much once again. Have a good day.